Mr. Murdoch, um, how can I put it? It's a great challenge for me to try and describe you. Uh, the closest I could come by comparison would be an equivalent of Alexander the Great. <laughs> uh, meaning that if you were not in the media business or if Alexander the Great was in the media business, you would probably have conquered uh, equivalent continents and countries and probably you would beat the record. Now during all those conquests you must have given a lot of wars and bloody battles and you must have had a lot of victories. Do you recall which was the hardest and longest war and battle and which was the greatest victory? I don't know well it's a lot of hyperbole but uh, we have several wars. I think to, uh, to establish our newspapers as really viable uh, properties and media in Britain was the biggest successful war we've had. Uh, now we are embarking on a war to establish another television network in America, which everybody said was impossible three years ago. And of course we have Sky, we are now just starting Sky Television for Britain. So uh, they are all big battles. Now talking about the Fox Network, as you said, a few years ago it would be unthinkable by US standards that there would be a fourth network, especially with the boom of cable TV. Now, what did it take to create such a successful network very quickly? Well, I think it was just seeing an opportunity. There were many news stations all over America, independents, that had a terrible lack of programming. So what we came along and said, let's have a fourth network, whereas we were laughed at by the big networks who were in trouble. We found it fairly easy to get small stations to join us. And whereas they were not strong stations, uh, we are making them strong now. Uh, some people attribute the success of the Fox network to its daring programming. Is it true? No, I don't think so. Uh, we, we tried very traditional programming. I think too many half-hour comedies. Uh, then we went into more reality programming, uh, which immediately caught on and got great interest. And then behind that, we put new comedies, some of them some a little daring, some very high quality. Well, sometimes quality and daring go hand in hand. And uh, to my belief, in a situation like the American TV standards, like the network standards, not TV standards, this is what makes the Fox network very interesting, that it is daring and it also has quality programming. Now, you seem to me that you are hands-on and creatively involved in the programming of the Fox Network. Uh, how involved are you? Yes, well, not enough. I would like to be much more. But we now have built a very big business around the world, and it takes a lot of attention. But I like to be on the creative side, whether it be in newspapers, uh, in choosing editors, working with editors, uh, or whether it be in television, doing the same thing. CNN had recently a piece about Die Harder which is the most expensive movie that Fox has made in recent years. And they said that you had a preview of the movie and uh, the audience liked it so much that after the end credits, they kept shouting, show it again. Uh, have you seen the movie personally? I've seen it, but I'm happy to hear that news. Now knowing and being aware that the movie has so far cost $62 million, and that does not even involve prints and advertisements, uh, for such an expensive movie, how much money would you be happy if it grossed in the box office? I think it's possible that it will gross um, 125, 150 million dollars in the United States, and about as much again around the world. And yeah, that's theatrical it will box be a, office only. Theatrical box office will be more than a quarter of a billion dollars. Now state? we don't get all that. We only get about, as you know, about 40 percent of that, and we will need that to break even to pay for the film and for the publicity. And still, if the picture grosses a quarter of a million dollars, probably of a billion yeah. dollars, then you have the revenue from video that, that's going to be very That'll be the profit, yes. Now, these are unthinkable numbers by Greek standards. The average Greek cannot comprehend a quarter of a billion dollars in box office revenue for a movie. Uh, talking about numbers, I know that you recently are involved in the East European economy, and you're buying heavily in East European countries. You recently bought two newspapers in Hungary, etc., etc. What plans do you have for Eastern Europe? And is Eastern Europe a long-term investment or you can see profit right away? Well, uh, the whole world is developing a lot uh, and media is developing throughout the world. Uh, and I think it's important that we sort of plant our flag where we can 
uh, and take our skills to these countries, and particularly in the small countries that are coming out from behind the Iron Curtain, we have a lot to contribute. Well, maybe in, in the long run, you're going to make a lot of money. Um, tell me about the Soviet Union. Would you get involved in their economy? We've been talking there. We've had a lot of invitations, but I think it's too early. There are too many unanswered questions. Now, this is your second visit to Greece after 30 or 40 years. In 40 years. In 40. How do you view Greece? Uh, how do you view the country? Uh, economically, politically, as uh, an opportunity for investment? Well, I, it obviously it has great opportunity, but, uh, and it has a culture here which is very attractive to people to invest. However, it has a history, a recent history of being uh, anti-private enterprise, anti-foreign investment, particularly anti-American. And one has to see how all these things will be cleared. I believe from the little evidence I have that all that is changing very dramatically, and that Greece not only will be a great opportunity for investment, but will need that investment, uh, and to be a magnet uh, for money to come in from other parts of the world, so that you can have modern industry, modern communications. Talking about communications, uh, Antenna TV is among the recent wave of independent stations. Um, something that we didn't even know in the past, we couldn't even believe that we would have in Greece. Uh, how important it is for a country uh, to have independent television? How important it is for a country to have television that is not subject to government censorship, government propaganda, uh, that can tell the truth, that can balance the news in a way that people can be really informed? I, I think it's absolutely important. I think it's very important to have a number of stations so that all different views can be put to the public, uh, but they should be in private hands, not in government hands at all. Maybe there is an argument for some public service broadcasting, which in the United States is slightly subsidized, but mainly voluntary. Um, some very good public broadcasting in Britain by the BBC. But, you know, the most healthy thing is to have all commercial broadcasting in the hands of commercial com companies competing with each other putting competing views as well as competing programs to the public and let the public choose. Some may make a lot of money, some may lose a lot of money, but that's, uh, that's what the system is about. Free enterprise. Yeah, it's risks and rewards. People go, some people go broke, some people get rich. Now since the conversation is about money, let me ask you a very important and rather crucial question. Are you planning to come to Greece and get involved in business here? I don't think in any big way, but we've had discussions with uh, various people here who would like us to join them, and we may like to join, but it's too early really to discuss that, well, like to not. talk about it in public. Of course. Uh, I'm really here this time, to tell you, on a holiday uh, with my children. I want them to see what I saw when I was their age uh, in 1952. Well, good luck both in business and in your vacation. Thank you for the interview, and have fun in Greece. Thank you very much. Media tycoon Rupert Murdoch, recently on a shopping spree in Eastern Europe, combined business with pleasure in Greece. Before sailing in the Blue Aegean with his family, Rupert Murdoch found some time to check out the country's economy, which is bouncing back after an eight-year all-time law under the now-defeated socialist government. He visited the studios of Antenna TV, one of the country's first independent stations, and spoke to Nikomas Storakis about movies, opportunities, and his involvement in the former Iron Curtain countries. A few years ago, it would be unthinkable by U.S. standards that there would be a fourth network, especially with the boom of cable TV. Now, what did it take to create such a successful network very quickly? Well, I think it was just seeing an opportunity. There were many news stations all over America, independents, that had a terrible lack of programming. So what we came along and said, let's have a fourth network, which we were laughed at by the big networks who were in trouble. We found it fairly easy to get small stations to join us. 
And whereas they were not strong stations, uh, we are making them strong now. CNN had recently a piece about Die Harder, which is the most expensive movie that Fox has made in recent years. And they said that you had a preview of the movie and uh, the audience liked it so much that after the end credits, they kept shouting, show it again. Uh, have you seen the movie personally? I've seen it, but I'm happy to hear that news. Now, knowing and being aware that the movie has so far cost $62 million and that